to TWM, which is a, a very minimal window manager. Let's clear this up. And move on here. Fetch it. So, um, we've got the requirement, recommended legacy fonts. I think we need to install some of these. And it's I have. <clears throat> so, X cursor themes, I think that's one we've already installed it is. And it says here how to download them. So let's go back here, run XC. So let's go to legacy fonts and copy this information here. Paste it in. Oops. Get the rest of that. So now we need to download them using these commands here. <clears throat> and as before, we've got a script here to a function, sorry, a shell function to add in. We'll run it in any way in case it's different. I don't believe it is but just in case and then we need to as before run a shell with an exit condition exit on error copy the commands to build these packages Okay, we've got an error here. <clears throat> How to write to cache. Okay, um, let's load the the LD config and I'm going to run them in again see if this installs now This time if it fails, just see which one it fails on. It does them in order that they appear in this file. So, yeah, it's failed again. So it's a JIS one, the looks of it. Entering directory, failed to write to cache.
Okay, what we're going to try to do is maybe to run this. Manually. Let's, let's delete it first, actually. So I'm just running the commands in here manually. I'm going to do sudo minus e make install. Yeah, it's still failing the same way. Okay, well, I think they're Japanese fonts, so what I'm going to do is <coughs> remove that one from the list. I don't think I'll be needing those. Um, if you do need them and you're getting the same area, unfortunately, you're going to have to try and fathom out why well that's failing so um, Okay, so what I'm going to do is make a copy of this legacy.md5, call it legacy uh, fixed.md5. And I'm going to remove that JOS one. So I'm going to delete that line. And if others fail, I'll do the same thing because um, the day we won, that's probably Asian characters as well. I'm not sure what these two are though, but these two are certainly um, Roman characters, so we'll, we'll be needing them. So let's recall that command. Uh, let's put bash E first, bash minus E. Go back to the beginning and changes to legacy dash fixed MD5. So that's the first one, which is the first Adobe font one. And this is the second one, the second Adobe. So that's okay. As long as they've gone in okay, then it's probably the two I'm really concerned about. Yeah, we're getting it again with the next one, with the Daiwoo one, so let's modify this again and get rid of that one. And I'll do bash minus C again, will I? Okay, 
This is slightly worrying while this keeps happening. Um, I'm going to actually remove the... Was that the ISIS one, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah, this is font Adobe 753. Yeah, ISIS, so... That means these first three have run. So I'm going to get rid of them, get rid of that one. And the only one left that could possibly install is this miscellaneous one. So let's see if this one works. <clears throat> yeah, it does seem to be working. So that's okay, the, the main ones. This looks like it's got possibly Chinese characters in it as well. So I'm, I'm happy that at least the main ones have been installed. So let's exit this bash that we created and that should be the fonts installed. So we can go back to TWM now. Tom, XVF, TWM, TWM, and we'll copy the configuration and build commands. There's a case no test suite, so it's just sudo minus a make install, and that's done. So now we're going to build X term so we get the next terminal up within our basic environment. So required XORG applications and required at runtime a TTF or OTF such as Deja Vu font. So let's install those. Let's do a readme. Oh, that's trying to download it. Let's see if it's here. It is. I guess we probably want this one here. I'm not sure if you have fonts. Tell us which ones. Alright, okay. Um, we need also to know how to install these. Um, fonts. All right, so some of these are duplicated different archives. So we've got fonts two three seven tar. And fonts TTF zip. Well, it looks to me okay. This one's got most downloads actually, but it's the TTF files, and that's the ones we want. So it looks like it's this file here we need.
so what I'm going to do is let's go back to our terminal take this link take that link okay now we're in source forge let's scroll down till we get to the files So I'm going to go into the 237 link here. Let's press enter there. Yeah, this is it. So we want the one called Deja Vu Fonts TTF 237. That one there, I think it's 5.4 meg. Yeah, that's that one. Uh, so I was about a cookie there, so let's do A for always. Download. So now we can install these. And deja vu fonts, yep. So can we copy this? Let's go up this page to get to the commands. There they are. So I've got to become the root user to install this. And just paste those three commands in. And that seems to have worked. So get rid of that page. Next term, right, did I install it, uh, download it, Palace, next term, yep, so let's extract it, oh well, there's optional things here, we've got PCRE 8.44 so we don't need that one, I'm sure we'll install that later, I think it's a new one by the looks of it version 2. So we're fine, we can carry on with external installation. So we've got, let's see if there's any configure options. Didn't look like it, so we'll just copy all of this. Oops. There's no test suite, so we become the root and install the package. That looks good. All 
Oh, configuring X term. Uh, so there's two ways. You can add the X resource definition to the user's X resources file or add them to the system wide X org prefix share da -da -da file. In order for X term to follow the locale settings in the environment, use a true type font and to follow the Linux convention about code sent by the backspace key, add the following definitions as the root user. Okay, so let's copy that. should be it. So this is not mandatory this X clock um, but we can build it anyway. It's just a little clock that comes up on the terminal. Download. Okay, so it's just a straightforward configure and make. Install it. That's finished. And now we've got X in it. Which needs TWM X clock and X term and just for runtime only. And that's basically because of the configuration that's used. So is there any config? No, there isn't. So let's just copy this, extract the package. Paste those commands in to build it. And then make installed. And once again, they've actually put the instructions into reload the libraries. Looks like that's done. So starting XORG from the, the command line, the default instructions above starts XORG on the current virtual terminal. Maybe convince the XORG and associate the application messages on the current virtual terminal, normally TTY1, and start the graphical environment on the first available unused terminal, normally TTY7. To do this, set the SUID bit on the XORG application as the root user. So we'll do that. At this point, you can start the XOR terminal on virtual terminal 7 with start x client arguments minus minus vt7. Now you can toggle between tt1 and tty7 with control or f1 and control or f7 combinations. To automatically start xorg on the first available virtual terminal, modify the start x script as the root user with that. After this change, the virtual terminal does not need to be specified on the start x command line. Okay, so we'll do this not as the root user. It's not recommended to run X at the root, and there's probably never really a reason to do that. So let's put this command in. Start X. I haven't got any client arguments. I don't know if there are any. This may not work because we do need to reboot to um, activate the new kernel but let's try it anyway and see what happens and unbelievably it does work so that's incredible I didn't expect that really to work our mass is working which is good let me get rid of this here you can see we've got a clock as well the X clock and we've got three 
virtual terminals as well. To resize these is a bit clunky, you've got to put your mouse over this little symbol in the top right, hold it down. To shrink it, you've got to move the cursor to either the bottom or the right hand screen and it kind of picks up that line and then you can resize it as you can see. And to move it, just click and hold the title bar. Again, I want to resize these. Just move it like that. So I guess the next thing I need to check works is the keyboard. So um, I want to say, and that appears to be working. So I'm quite surprised at that. I didn't really expect this to work out of the box like this. And hopefully the changes made in the kernel won't affect the functionality we've got at the moment. But I wouldn't have thought so, but you never know. Um, if you right click the background, you get this um, menu to, so you can like start off a new X terminal. Ask you where you want to put it. That, that's attached to the mouse. I'm not holding the button down or anything. Where you, when you want it placed, just click the left button and it will place it. And you'll notice the focus follows the mouse cursor. So wherever the mouse cursor is, that's the focus. Get rid of that terminal. So yeah, I've got the root as well. So that's all good. So basically we've come to the end of where we intended to get to oh let me just put in this command here so what I'll have to do now is uh, get a links terminal up in another window so let's see if I can do that Read online. I want next. And I want to go to near the end. Xorg. X in it. There you go. Oh no, it's not this one, it's that one we're in X, X in it still. So as you can see, it's still quite a bit difficult to read. You can't quite see the actual boxes with the commands to type in, unfortunately. But um, we should be able to copy from here, actually, if I bring this back. Should be able to highlight this and paste it in just as we've been doing with GPM. It should work in exactly the same way, uh, except for it's not right click this time, sorry. It's center click, it'll be to paste. And the reason why that's failed again is because it's picked up the end of line character in the terminal because it's wrapped around, so what I have to do is rub that out. Or what I'll do is just bring this back, but because it's wrapped around, what I'll have to do is to highlight and paste each line separately, if that ever happens again. Or alternatively, um, just made the win window wider. Okay, that's not worked. Let's um, see if I can actually make this wider. Okay, links doesn't know about the change, unfortunately. So I'll have to stop links, start it again. Okay, 
back to that section. Fixing it. Page down to it. So you can see now the command is not wrapped around, so that would enable me to copy it all as one. So I should do that. Center click, enter. Oh, uh, what's happened there? That looks a bit frightening. sure what's happened there. Um, let me come out of this. It's probably the best thing to do. Um, so let's do it from outside of here. Oh, this terminal is obviously off the screen. Yeah, I can't pick up the bottom of that one. So let's get the web page back and copy it from here. sudo minus e. Oh, right, I see it. It's put it onto the screen, the looks of it. Let's look at this um, script to make sure it has actually done something. sure what it has actually done. I don't understand the codes for said too well, but um, we can try the change just by typing start x and yeah it seems to have worked. Let me see if I can switch back to F1. No it's not working. That's F7. That's F1. It's not working, so I need to check here what the StarTex command looked like. Okay, that doesn't look much difference. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's actually done anything. If I start, make it org. Let's see what org's coming in. Well, it's definitely copied correctly as, it, as you'd expect. Start prefix. Um, I've just been reminded about this. Let's refresh this page in case it's changed. Something moved there. Get in live. See monkey plasma. Rasp. Happy tables. Text live. No, there's no further changes there.
Das ist mal gut, gut zu gut fangen. So, I'm gonna try this once more. Yeah, I didn't, I wouldn't expect it to. Display stuff to, to the screen normally, actually. Said command, so that's why I'm not sure it's working correctly. Um, let me check the SVN version. Oh, not that screen, or that keyboard rather. Let's have a look at development one. That looks the same to me. So I think what I might do is um, reinstall this at this point. Uh, sorry, not reinstall, uh, reboot the machine at this point. I'm going to leave that source directory there. I'm going to come out of all these pages, these terminals. So that was X in it to write on that one. Yes, come out of there. come out of that one just in case this problem is to do with the kernel reboot we need so I'm going to reboot this now So let's try it on its own. So it loads all right. No, it's still loading as the first terminal. Yeah, seven's not active, so it's definitely not working. Command, yeah. Again, I'm not sure that should be displaying that to the screen. Add the script to the commands to be executed. Yeah, like I said, the trouble is I don't know what these are supposed to be doing.
just try it and redirect the output to That didn't look any different either. It says here automatic return an unused display. Oh, there's a display, not a virtual terminal. Ah, right, okay. That's interesting. Um, the command that I've redirected actually does work. It's almost as if that said command is incomplete. As I say, I don't know too much about said. In fact, I know very little about said, so I'm not sure if the syntax is missing something or not. Um, so what I'm going to do is to, I'm going to do sudo minus e, and I'm going to move the original startx and call it Original, StarTex original, so I'm taking a backup of it and spell, and then I'm going to copy this StarTex. In fact, I'll yeah, I'll copy and I'll move it. Move the StarTex I've just created by uh, piping the output of that command. I'm going to make that the startex in the XOR prefix bin. And then I'm just going to check the permissions of both of the startexes to make sure there's nothing that needs to be changed. Yes, yeah, so. The so make it ownable by root and user root for the file I've just copied. Oh yes, sudo minus e. So if I list that now, you can see it's owned by root, and now I've got to make it executable by the world. So do chmod plus x on the file. If I list it again now, you can see it's um, executable, but you can also see that it's currently writable by anybody in the root group, whereas the original is not like that. So I'm going to remove that. So it's g minus w. And now that's correct. It's got the same as the original. So in theory, if I start, type star x and I select the sixth terminal, for example, it's got the terminal six. If I go to terminal one, that's worked. Now that's where I was originally when I started star x. You can see the output from the X server. So that's fine. And if I do control or F7, it's now gone to the graphical screen so it's worked as it should do and um, that's how it should have been after that said command so I'm like I say I'm not sure I'm slightly sort of puzzled as to why that command seems as though it's incomplete and there's no again there's no um, uh, errata and and that command is the same this is the actual development version this is svn version why that command is still the same as it is in the current version so um 
Yes, I can't explain that. But anyway, at least it's fixed. So, oh, it looks like we've jumped ahead of ourselves here. Um, it says about testing and configuration. So, to test it, issue star text, we've done that. Brings up a rudimentary window manager called TWM3 Windows and one X clock. So, we've got that. Yeah, there's something important to remember. This window here is known as the login terminal. And as it says here, this is the one, if you exit this one, the whole lot exits, um, irrespective of what else you've got running in the other windows. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, we can check the DRI is working by checking the var log XORG log for this statement. So. Let's do that uh, if I keep using the right mouse. So you can see the focus, as I said before, changes. So I'm hovering over the login X term. It actually says login to remind you of this one. Here's the login terminal. So this is another good reason why um, I've set up the Control D. So if I do press Control D, normally that would exit immediately, but that's like a warning to check. I don't want to execute this one because it will bring the whole lot down. So let's look to see if we've got this var log xorg log we have. And we can grep. Oh, let's do this in another window actually. This is, I don't know if I can pick up that bottom one. The mouse won't go off the screen, no. Unfortunately, it's too big. So let's do it on this one here. Um, cat stroke. Bar log XORG log, yep. So let's grep. And I have to remember the keyboard set up for a US keyboard at the moment, unfortunately. Let's look for DRI 2. Let's just look for DRI. So yeah, it's working. So you can see the right rendering, DRI2 is enabled. And if you've got uh, the Nouveau driver installed for NVIDIA, that's the output you'd have. Another way to determine if DRI working properly is to use one of the two optionally installed G OpenGL demo programs from Mesa. So from an external run GLX info, look for the phrase these phrases here so let's type in GLX info and as you can see that outputs quite a lot so let's scroll back with shift page up I think it's right at the beginning as I remember so name of display is colon zero that's correct display colon zero screen zero yep and direct rendering yes so that's all working If threat rendering is enabled, you can add the positive by running this command. So let's try that. libgl underscore debug equals verbose glx info. And it looks about the same to me, actually. And it says another way to just check it is to run GLX info, pipe it through e grep. Sorry, pipe, like I said, I've got a US keyboard set at the moment. Quotes, open, and bracket, open GL, space, vendor, pipe, open GL space renderer pipe open gl space version close bracket close quotes oh yes quotes aren't the same either so 
So it says something about permission denied. Oh, I failed to load driver for some reason. If it reports something other than software rasterizing you for working with acceleration with the user, then run the command. Ah, oh, now I think have we got a cat etc group groups. Yeah, I'm not sure if we need to add Kernatex user to the video group, and that's why the permission's not working. Um, I'm not sure if it mentions this or not. No, it doesn't. Um, so what I'm going to do is to to use a mod. Oh, let's see. See it come root user mod. Yeah, and we want to append a group and we want to add this group video to kernel text. So now groups for kernel text has got video as well come out of root, I'm going to log in as myself to activate that group. Yeah, I'm part of that group now, so if I recall this command, yeah, we're not getting the error now about no access to the, um, what was the error? This error here, permission denied to the dev DRI, DRI card zero permission denied. So it's probably not active at the moment because I'm still logged in. So if I log out on, oops, move the right mouse on this terminal here. It doesn't seem to be working. That's better and log back in again. Oh no, sorry, I've got to log out of this session here, because if I do groups, it's still got me without the video user, so log out, log back in again, uh, just check with groups, I'm in the video group, I am, that's better, StarTex, yep, it's still working, just move this here, so if I now recall that command again, yeah, I'm not getting that error anymore, so let's fix that. Hypergraphics, I think this is uh, the graphics I've said before where you've got um, like a 2D stuff is driven by the Intel chip and 3D stuff's driven by the NVIDIA chip, but it's all through one um, dis display output, either VJ or display port of some sort. So if you've got that, mostly hardware stuff as far as I know, you'll probably need to in, uh, you know, follow this information. Um, let's try running this XR&R. Command prompt. Just out of interest. Yeah, there's only one there, so that shows if I've got, only got one video card active. Um, it says that everything should work normally. If it doesn't, then you may need to set things manually and it shows you here how to uh, set up the XOR conf. Now this used to be the only way of configuring XOR, but now it's, it should be normally fully automatic. But if you do have problems, then you may need to edit these config files. So tuning font config, It barely scratches the surface, so the stuff here, I'm not sure if we need to do stuff here at the moment. Let's 
so this might be something to install here to copy and paste and although I've got an X windows up I still cannot copy and paste stuff because this is a, a like a real terminal that you're looking at now at the moment so it's not anyway associated with this browser that's coming from distant system just using a bit of uh, magic to get these two on the same screen so what I need to do is to get a browser up as I did before What's that happening? That's a bit strange. Oh, was it the space it didn't like? Yeah, don't know why it didn't like that space. So let's do read on nine. Find our section twenty four. Tuning font config. So there's lots of information here. You can read. So let's copy this. It doesn't look like it's wrapping around this time. Uh, use a right mouse. So we should be able to just copy this. Remember, center click now. Oh, I have to be the. I'll have to clear this every now and then to make sure I don't lose the bottom of the screen. Right, so now I can paste this with a center click. Over on this window, get the next page. Copy the remainder. Center click. That's worked. Disabling bitmap fonts. You probably definitely want to do this. Um, they're quite ugly. They're what used to be used years and years ago. So I'm going to put that in as well. What else have we got? Adding extra font directories. So saying about adding other fonts that might be installed as part of a text package. Um, so maybe this is something we can come back to do. We've installed text and they actually exist. It says how to prefer certain fonts, so we could do that. So what it's saying is to say um, if if the application asks for a Times New Roman, this is our font, the Nimbus one, Nimbus Roman, which is the one to use whenever a Times New Roman is uh, requested. So this is for Chinese, Japanese, and Korean fonts. And something about old style font config and some hints online about using them. So TTF and OTF, I think we've already been to this page yeah, where we've installed the Deja Vu, so if you want to install others, you can do so. Um, I'm not going to bother installing these. Um, I have done in the past, but um, generally the ones that are supplied by default are adequate. If you do require more fonts then you can um, get these. Some of them are quite big downloads. I think the Noto font is quite a large one. It's got, as it says here, it aims to cover every glyph in Unicode no matter how obscure. Oxygen fonts. 
is not active in my own tens, although using the Noto fonts anyway, so you may have to download that as part of the KDE, possibly. Exorg Legacy. Okay, yeah, we've already done this one. So that is more or less the um, X window system completed. We've got a running system. It works as we expect. Um, so the next thing to do, um, I haven't decided whether to go straight for a, a browser or not yet, because the browser is going to be bring in a load of um, dependencies, and I'm aware that there's a load of rebuilds that need to be done. So I'm going to close this video now and consider which is the best way to move um, to um, make it easier to complete the rest of the migration to the GUI because once we're in the situation where we've got a GUI browser that's working within this environment then I don't need to rely on this browser here which is part of the um, session that I'm recording this on so it's a completely different computer I've got two PCs running at the moment the one with this browser on and the actual PC that we're building Linux from scratch on so once that browser is, is up and running, then I'll only need the one PC, the one we're building on. And as I say, you wouldn't have this luxury of having this GUI browser, assuming you've only got one PC, which is what the demonstration is all about. You would be just using the text browser. Um, so like I say, I'm going to try and decide whether to go back and rebuild these applications first using just the text browser and then come back and build the graphical browser or do the graphical browser first which risks having more applications to rebuild um, and then doing those applications the rebuilding those applications after we've got the graphical browser so I'll consider that but for now at least we got there eventually we had a few hiccups a few um, unusual things happening I'm not, not quite sure what they are but we've got around some one or two we've ignored because you know like the uh, xml document stuff doc book stuff probably not that important hopefully it's not that important um but for now i'll leave it like that uh i hope it's been useful for you uh please thumbs up the video if you have found it useful or if you enjoyed watching and um subscribe to the channel to find out when i'll be publishing future videos so thank you very much goodbye